your forecast first. Sponsored by Matax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. And here we are, our town, Paris, on this absolutely gorgeous Friday night. We are on the Courthouse Square here in Paris with the Illinois Pork Producers Association. They've got some great food here, as they always have at our Our Towns here in 2020. And yes, that weather is cooperating just perfectly. Maybe you're outside doing your own grilling here tonight. I would recommend doing so because it is pleasant. Clear skies, temperatures are in the mid 80s and humidity, well, it's pretty tolerable right now. No major issues here as we go throughout tonight. Now the weekend well, that rings in a little different with warmer temperatures and the humidity coming back. We'll talk about that and, of course, have much more live from our town, Paris. WCA3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA3 News. It, it hurts. It does not feel good when people don't like you. He's been called names, mocked, and taunted. How this African-American teenager is standing up to the racism. We had fully anticipated the COVID-19 to be declining by now. But that's not the case everywhere. What one school district has decided to do this fall. And the recount for Macon County Sheriff is complete, but it doesn't mean the race is over. We'll explain why. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. Around like five or six hate accounts so far, and I think they're still going up as we go on. A 14 year old in Tolono says he's facing racism from other students after wanting to bring a rally to his hometown. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. Kobe Clark says because he wanted to celebrate the Black Lives Matter movement, he's faced derogatory and discriminatory language from others online. WCI 3's Andy Olson is live in the newsroom tonight. So, Andy, when did this start? Well, Paul, Clark says people started creating social media accounts mocking him within the last week. But he says this isn't the first time something like this has happened. Kobe Clark has heard discriminatory statements throughout his time at school. In the midst of social change around the world, he was excited to hear a group was thinking about bringing a protest to Tolono to fight racial injustice. I decided to let, you know, my social media platform know in case anyone anyone wanted to come um, and I received some good news and people were supporting me and I was appreciative of that and there were some pe people who were not happy of that. These are some of the posts that have been directed towards Clark since then. Clark says the posts are from about a dozen fellow students. This was the name of a Snapchat group that Clark was just invited to. It, it hurts. It does not feel good when people don't like you or just have a bad feeling about you and especially hurts when you have multiple people not liking you. The school district responded to the situation saying quote we have alerted law enforcement regarding the situation. Unit 7 will not condone any bullying of any kind or discriminatory statements. Village leaders in Tolono say they haven't been contacted about a rally yet. The group considering bringing the protest says there's nothing concrete yet, but Clark hopes this type of event can spark change in his small town. I just, I just hope there's nothing like that targeted towards technically anybody, but specifically people of color or minorities, like you said. I just don't want any hatred of that because of something that they can't control and something that's beautiful. Now Clark says he'll be going to Centennial High School in Champaign in the fall. One of the reasons he's switching school districts is because of that hate in the past. Live in the newsroom, Andy Olson, WCIA3, your local news leader. Let's hope he has a better experience there. Andy, thanks. Here's a follow-up now. Leaders at the U of I are trying to address racial inequality. They're working on a new way to tackle the problem. It'll be based in Chicago and will bring together experts to work on policy reform. That system will launch in the fall. It's part of a call to action effort by Chancellor Robert Jones. He calls it the first step in the university's efforts to address systemic racism. Some parents are deciding whether their child will learn virtually or in person, but one district isn't giving much of a choice. WCIA3's Gabrielle Cook has more. Many school districts are going the hybrid learning route this fall semester, but Decatur Schools says they aren't taking the risk. All those factors plus the numbers over the summer, we have fully anticipated the COVID-19 to be declining by now, right? And for a while it was, but now it's 
sur surging up, not just uh, nationally, but locally. All Decatur public schools will have virtual learning for the first quarter of the school year. Parent Dana Thomas realizes the dangers of in-person learning. What anybody would bring home uh, and what anybody would spread to the community, it's, it's just all so unknown. And But she's also concerned about the families who don't have the help she does. My mother-in-law, I don't know what I would do without her. Uh, I have friends and family and colleagues that have no support, no assistance. If your child has an individualized education program, IEP, or is an English language learner, then you can receive in-person help. Indicator, I'm Gabrielle Cook, WCIA3, your local news leader. Decatur schools also urged parents to register with their schools so they have updated information. The state public health department says four counties are at a warning level for coronavirus. That means each has two or more COVID-19 risk indicators that measure the COVID-19 increase, such as new cases, number of deaths, weekly positivity rate, and ICU availability. The counties that have seen outbreaks include Adams, LaSalle, Peoria, and Randolph. There are more than 1,500 new cases of coronavirus in Illinois, and that's the third straight day. It's over 1,500. That brings the total to over 168,000 infections in the state. 19 more people have died. There are now over 7,300 COVID-related deaths in Illinois. The attorney with several active lawsuits against the governor over the stay-at-home order is filing more lawsuits concerning COVID-19. Attorney Thomas DeVore filed lawsuits in six counties, including Sangamon. DeVore is challenging whether the definition of a public health emergency as defined in the er Illinois Emergency Management Act should be applied to all 102 counties in the state. He says if certain counties don't meet the emergency definition, the governor's proclamation should not apply to those counties. The law requires there be a wide, in the county, a widespread, that's the language it uses, loss of life. Is 33 out of 198,000 widespread loss of life? I would suggest no. Doesn't mean that loss of life is not tragic. Is it a public health emergency that requires these extreme and extraordinary measures? That's the question. Divorce lawsuit against the IHSA is set for a preliminary ruling next week. A large gathering of people without masks planned to get together in the capital city over the weekend. The Million Unmasked March is scheduled for tomorrow. Organizers are expecting people from across the state to march from the capital to the State Board of Education to protest the back to school guidance. The group believes it should have a say as to whether their children should wear a mask to class. And we fundamentally disagree with that, that directive. And secondary to that, we, uh, we object to any future COVID-19 vaccination requirements for our children to return to school either this fall or the next. Nine people are slated to speak at the event. It starts at 10 a.m. Congressman Rodney Davis joined a group of House Republicans to voice their problems with the state's unemployment system. Representatives Tim Butler, Terry Bryant, and Dan Ugasti called on their chamber to hold a hearing and ask questions of the administration and IDS leadership. Davis backed their calls, saying the federal government deserves answers, too. The frustration that I've heard from my friends, these three legislators, is, is extra frustrating to somebody like me, a federal official, who actually voted to ensure that states like Illinois would be able to get much needed unemployment benefits to our citizens. A spokesperson for Governor Pritzker released a statement in response saying, quote, Illinoisans should not be fooled by their phony outrage when they won't vote to support the critical benefits working families need. Davis did not say whether or not he would vote to extend the pandemic unemployment assistance program in the next federal relief act. Here's an update now. Speaking of Congressman Davis, a man from Rochester pleaded guilty to making a threat against Davis. Randall Tarr admitted to calling the Republican in November, leaving a voicemail and threatening to shoot the congressman. That voicemail was sent to U.S. Capitol Police. Their caller ID helped authorities track him down. Sentencing is set for November 20. November. Making a threat to a federal official carries a maximum penalty of 10 years in prison. Another teenager has been arrested on gun charges. 18-year-old Joaquin Hughes of Champaign has been charged with unlawful possession of a handgun. The Champaign County Street Crimes Task Force made the arrest this afternoon as part of an ongoing investigation into people illegally possessing guns. Police are investigating after a paintball battle between several people caused collateral damage in Rantoul. Police say several vehicles in the Pheasant Ridge neighborhood were shooting paintballs at each other. The same thing happened a few weeks ago, but only with one car shooting at people and homes. 
At least one person was hit. They were not hurt. Paintballs uh, can, can hurt people, and, th and that's obviously what we want to try to prevent is, is somebody being hit, uh, a house being you know hit, windows being broken, something like that. So that's what we, we want to try to prevent. Besides the paint, police say there wasn't any damage to property. They are still looking for the people responsible. The IHSA still hasn't made a call on fall sports. What group of athletes found out today they won't be playing? Also tonight, the ballots have been recounted and the totals are in. But it hasn't made a difference in the race for Macon County Sheriff. It's our town, Paris. Of course, it's always about the food out here and the meats, and there's lots of it. And here in just a little bit, we're going to be uh, trying out some of the different various meats that our Grim Master has cooked up for us here tonight. But instead of me actually eating, someone else will be doing the taste test. That's coming up as we also talk about your weather, which includes a warmer weekend. They're excited for us in Paris. We'll have more coming up.